Здравствуйте, товарищи! Поздравляю вас с 77-й годовщиной победы в Великой Отечественной войне! The rise of global conflicts were the line blares between allies and adversaries, settling old scores, redesigning the world map yet once again. New alliances are being forged. Welcome to the age of undeclared wars. The day of conventional kinetic warfare alone in a contained geographical boundary is over. With the rise of new powers, new technologies brings new challenges into a new world that is still suffering from the wounds of old wars and creating a major transformation into how conflicts will be fought. The growing threats in cyberspace are becoming more real and sophisticated. The number of nation states with cyber capabilities continues to grow as new cyber armies are being stood up every year across the globe. I'm General Paul M. Nakasone, Commander of U.S. Cyber Command, Director of the National Security Agency, and Chief of the Central Security Service. Behind me is our Joint Operations Center, where cyber warriors from U.S. Cyber Command and the National Security Agency work side by side with U.S. and foreign partners to defend our nation in cyberspace. Here on this operations floor, talented teams work around the clock as part of a whole of government approach to respond to adversarial cyber activity. Cyberspace has created a new strategic environment in which cyber actors can increase their power, degrade the power of others, and gain a strategic advantage. From a lone hacker to violent extremist organizations to nation states, our adversaries are demonstrating a new risk calculus that has changed the traditional threat landscape. By operating in cyberspace, they can cause great damage without ever engaging in armed conflict. They target our economies, our critical infrastructures, and our electoral processes. They steal defense secrets, intellectual property, and personally identifiable information. They launch persistent malicious cyber campaigns to erode our military advantages. And they increasingly leverage social media to carry out influence operations. This is the new era of strategic competition. The United States was and still is the pioneer regarding information warfare and cyberspace. They inspired everyone else to copy their blueprint since the early beginnings of the 90s. The United States wanted a better module from the one demonstrated during Desert Storm Gulf War. Moving from a hybrid module into a pure digital form using information and information systems as a weapon against their adversaries, eliminating kinetic weapons completely. A doctrine that embeds in it a series of activities triggered by the need to alter information flows going to their enemies while protecting their own. 
These activities included physical radio-electronic attacks, targeting sensors and radars, with great focus on compromising cryptographic comms, an attack against computer systems followed by a full-scale psychological operations. Defining information warfare as an action to support national security strategies in order to reach and maintain a decisive advantage by attacking the information infrastructure of the United States enemies while protecting and supporting friendly ones. In 1998, the US Air Force published its Doctrine on Information Operations called Air Force Doctrine Document AFDD 25 Information Operations, followed by the official doctrine of the Joint Chiefs of Staff JCS JP313, published in the same year. According to JP313, this doctrine includes psychological operations, electronic warfare, deception operations, destroying and or manipulating enemies' information systems without leaving any visible digital trace. In 2005, the United States Air Force published a revision of AFDD 25 information operations. In this new publication, the term information warfare is completely removed and the term information operations or what they called integrated control enablers, ICE, is used as a method in times of war and or peace. General Wang Puffing is considered the grandfather of the Chinese information warfare doctrine. He was fascinated by the superiority of the Americans during the first Gulf War. Where the Americans, by acquiring satellite reconnaissance systems, located strategic Iraqi sites and attacked them with high precision and put on a show to the world to witness, as any good and smart propagandist would do. General Pufeng distinguishes two forms of information warfare, offensive and defensive. Offensive, where information reconnaissance to gain information on targets, electronic interference, information suppression, computer viruses to halt enemies' computer systems. Defensive, counter-reconnaissance, resistance to interference, and resistance against enemies' malicious malware. In 2004, the Information Department published a document structuring the national defense policy regarding the revolution in military affairs that it must deploy military information systems introducing digital and electronical equipments in all operations and digitizing their weapon systems. In May 2015, the PLA Daily published a dedicated issue regarding cyberspace as a sovereignty, mentioning the need for a new reform with the usual propaganda such as the West is the enemy because they are aggressive, China is under ideological and political attack. This was followed in the same month by a defense white paper where a section was dedicated to cyberspace which is described as a new pillar of the economy, of social development and a new era in national security. The Chinese approach to the concept of information warfare is a simple copy of the American module 
with few minor changes. China uses the theme of info dominance and exactly the same pillars of information warfare defined by the US Air Force, such as electronic warfare, tactical deception, propaganda warfare, psychological warfare. TikTok could be used as one of these examples. The ghost of the first Gulf War could be easily seen reflecting still on the new Chinese cyberspace doctrine. For the Chinese government, the information age is described as the third most important in the history of humanity, just after farming and industrial revolution. The Russian doctrine refers to information systems, electronic media, networking as an element of information space. While the United States DOD uses the term information environment, these descriptions bear extreme similarities in their substance. The Russian information warfare is constructed on conceptual levels. Unlike the Western approach, Defending of the sovereignty of the national internet is a major issue in national security and Russia has recently conducted many drills to ensure these principles are applied. The Russian military doctrine revisions of 2000, 2010 and 2014 didn't mention any cyber warfare. It is classified as information instruments similar to political, diplomatic, military and economic tools to protect national interests. Everything changed with the new doctrine published in 2015, sponsored and approved by President Putin himself. This was determined by the changes in the international landscape, taking account of new realities associated with technological developments and new political strategies landscape. According to General Gerasimov, a war can be won or avoided by non-violent means in which information warfare plays a part. The role of non-military means to achieve political and strategic aims. FAPSI the Federal Agency for Government Communications and Information, equivalent to NSA, plays the role of defending against information weapons, such as malware as a weapon, concentrated DDoS attacks, and any sophisticated supply chain attacks. The Russian-Georgian conflict was the turning point for the Russian government where they initiated the renewal of all their theoretical, strategical and military capacity in terms of information warfare and established the 10 years plan to evolve to a new agile super cyber power in which we are clearly observing currently. Rules of Peace and Cyber Warfare Legalities Creating clear and transparent international laws regarding cyberspace and cyber warfare is the best solution to this vague and murky digital space, where wars aren't declared anymore. The law of armed conflicts should be enforced in this cyberspace. Juice ad bellum an upright reason is required when two or more states uses force or violence against each other. This is governed by the UN Charter. Juice in Bello, human suffering should be minimized. This is the core of what is called International Humanitarian Law, IHL. The hybrid warfare or non-linear warfare can be defined as a military strategy that blends conventional warfare 
and cyber warfare. By combining kinetic operations with subversive efforts, the aggressor intends to avoid attribution or retribution. The Talon Manual represents an attempt to apply international law to operations in cyberspace. The focus of the Talon Manual is on cyber operations that clearly qualify as armed attacks and the justification of self-defense. That would be a good starting point for a peaceful cyber and digital space.